Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's session on entrepreneurship. I uh, hope you've enjoyed the plenary session earlier. My name is Emmanuel Gert. I work for the Education and Culture Executive Agency of the European Commission in Brussels. And I would like, uh, and I'm your, your uh, stage host uh, for, for this session. It is a great pleasure to have you here today and to guide you through this uh, next hour. We also have my colleague, Mr. Alexander Stelz on board, who is our co-host and he helps out if there is any um, unexpected turns. Uh, I do not want to take too much uh, time for this introduction as we have an hour full of information. We have uh, representatives from uh, three projects present today, uh, the SMART projects, V2Work and Rebus. Each representative uh, will speak about their, uh, all the representatives for each project will speak about their project for uh, and approach for approximately 15 minutes. And uh, after the presentations, there will be a rather short Q&A phase. For this, if you would like to ask questions, uh, uh, please use the Q&A section um, and not the chat box. So this is on the right part uh, of your of your screen. Um, so you can already write your um, your questions during the presentation, but we and we will try to answer them afterwards. There's also the possibility for you to upvote questions. So please rather use the um, the Q&A uh, section and not so much the the chat function. Um, okay, so this is what I wanted uh, to say to you as an introduction, and now I would like to um, um, give the floor to the, the, the to the first presenter of the smart project. Thank you very much, dear Emanuel. Um, thank you, organizers, um, uh, for this invitation and the possibility to share our results. Uh, accurate due to co-financing uh, within the Erasmus Prats, uh, program um, <clears throat> of the European Union. So the title, um, I'm going to share uh, the screen with you. Just a second, please. Yes, now we can see that. Yes, that's great. So um, as you can see, the title, the full title of our project is Fostering University Enterprise Cooperation and Entrepreneurship of the Students via Smart Cafe. And today we're three speakers here. My name is Elena Simchuk and I'm representing State Agrarian University co-coordinator of this project. Also, we have on board um, Ani Hovsepian. She is representing uh, Brusa State University. And uh, the third uh, lady is uh, Lilith Torchan. She is representing Gavar State University. Uh, so um, we are from uh, two Eastern Partnership countries, Moldova and Armenia here today. The next slide um, will introduce you in more details about our consortium and we were really a, a very friendly and nice consortium. Um, we counted uh, 15 partners. Uh, the main institution, coordinator institution is Hellenic International University from Greece. Um, the second one is from Moldova, which I'm representing. Also, we had uh, um, four more partners uh, from Spain, Belgium, Germany, and Bulgaria, as you can see. We um, uh, had um, three organizations from uh, Armenia, two higher education institutions and uh, one non-governmental organization. Uh, the same is applicable for the Republic of Moldova. We had uh, uh, actually three higher education institutions and one non-governmental organization. And also we had uh, two representatives uh, of higher education institutions from Belarus and one public organization, Belarusian Innovative Fund. So the state uh, institution, public. Uh, our so um, 
I just forgot to tell you, if you um, search for a good partners, so you can find them uh, through our consortium as well. And now I'm going to present you the main target groups we wanted um, to involve in our project. So, of course, we wanted to, to welcome students and they were our final target group. But uh, during the implementation of the project, uh, we had strong collaboration with the entrepreneurial sector through two main um, spaces, physical and virtual one. And I'm going to tell you more about this. So also we um, had um, the researchers on board. We had the companies or other representatives of public or uh, private um, sector. Um, I will be happy to share with you more details, but now uh, it's uh, my colleague Lili Torchan who will introduce you in the wider objective and specific objectives. So again, hello everyone. I hope you can hear me very well and I can proceed with my presentation. So the general objective of SMART project was to advance employment and self-employment potential of graduates from partner countries and enhance innovativeness of companies by fostering students' entrepreneurship, creation of business startups and open innovation approach in collaboration between universities and enterprises, and a project achieved this by developing a co-creative, motivating and supportive environment, smart based network that encouraged and fostered students' entrepreneurial intent and at the same time supported open innovation approach. The specific objectives of the project are the following. Set up, equip and network co-creative centers, smart cafes, which support students and researchers to generate, develop, market, and commercialize their own innovative ideas through entrepreneurship and innovation in three partner countries. <coughs> so smart cafes have brought students, researchers, entrepreneurs, small and medium enterprises, solution and service providers, users into co-creative environment, deepened understanding about complex interactions between technologies of market, and thereby substantially increase the likelihood for both high potential startups and successful open innovations. Smart cafes are physical and virtual spaces where innovative products and services are conceptualized and validated and then spun out into new venture initiatives. Another specific objective of the project was fostering students' entrepreneurship and creation of startups at university settings. So smart cafes have fostered the practical involvement of partner countries, higher education institutions in entrepreneurial education, putting students on the focus. And smart cafes are conceived as open hubs a welcome students, recent graduates, have starting ideas or creative potentials, but who lack skills and resources to realize the potential. Smart cafes in uh, different higher education institutions of partner countries have joined forces by sharing knowledge, expertise and resources to help the students to expand their activities to the regional or even global market. Another objective was to introduce and implement open innovation as a new form of partnership among key stakeholders and knowledge triangle in the region. Smart cafes are a new model of public-private people partnership that fits to higher education institutions of partner countries context and uses regional approach. This physical and virtual space has fostered the process of education and research innovation by strengthening the cooperation between universities and entrepreneurial sector, students with industrial sector and its requests. And finally, its wider and its specific objective was revising and adapting curricula to include entrepreneurial skills and problem-based learning. So trainings elaborated in collaboration with the EU teaching staff and partner country teaching staff and entrepreneurs from smart cafes have been partly included in the teaching process at partner, education, uh, partner country higher education institutions. And inclusion of smart cafes into teaching process, not only entrepreneurially oriented students, but students at large have become an integral part of new product and service developments and new venture creation and has got the chance uh, for the students to enhance their own employability. Besides serving as a cross-disciplinary and multi-stakeholder platform for entrepreneurship, collaboration with industry innovation and commercialization, smart cafes have offered a unique environment for problem and work-based learning and improved educational experience for students at large and prepare them for their active role at the labor market. 
Thank you, Elena. Thank you very much, Lilith. So uh, we are going further. And um, sorry, just a second. So <clears throat> we briefly presented you seven higher education institutions from Eastern Partnership countries, Moldova, Armenia, and Belarus, who created the network of Smart Cafe, ambitious um, spaces uh, uh, divided in physical spaces and virtual one. So the main purpose of these spaces were to uh, provide students with the possibilities to collaborate with the real sector entrepreneurs and uh, thus foster their uh, skills regarding open innovation, or we can call them problem-based learning, and uh, their abilities to create their own startups. So the physical spaces, as you can see, uh, provide uh, is a combination of incubator and accelerator. It's uh, an infrastructure for our students, our residents. It's a workspace for co-working and networking. There also due to our multidimensional uh, extracurricular training program, we assist them in order uh, they will be able to launch their businesses. Also, we provide a mentorship. We created a space where can, they can develop these open innovations and uh, we help them to attract the financing in order to start their businesses. The next um, slide will be about the virtual space. Uh, that is actually... Um, a reflection of the uh, physical one and uh, our main task was uh, to uh, remain still uh, linked to each other uh, even after the project will be ended so um, we created this space where you can find uh, three main directions uh, uh, open innovations where uh, companies post their challenges and students come with the solution uh, the other direction is about uh, um, market for ideas where students uh, just uh, post their business ideas and mentors can come with the evaluation and advices. And the third direction is education centers, so our extracurricular programs. The uh, website, the, main, uh, the platform, you can see here, smart channel. And um, now I would like to show you how our spaces look in real life, you can see them, how we created them in different countries within different higher education institutions. And this one is our virtual space, um, how it looks. Uh, so please, uh, Annie, can you please introduce us briefly in our indicators? Uh, good afternoon, dear colleagues. Greetings from Armenia. So far, you have uh, got quite a lot of information about the project and the activities done so far. So basically, now I will introduce uh, more numbers. So at the very beginning and the initial stage of the project, uh, within the frame of seven work packages in total, within the frame of the first work, work package, more than 600 interviews were conducted with entrepreneurs, uh, academic staff and students from the Eastern partnership countries in order to have uh, the general information and market needs assessment in order to proceed to the further activities of the further work packages. So based on those information, our European colleagues had the possibility also to proceed to the global concept of the operational innovation of Hub Smart Cafe Entrepreneurship Center at the premises of the Eastern Partnership countries. So um, at that stage also, we had created and equipped seven innovation hubs at the premises of those universities functioning in Belarus, Moldova, in Armenia. So whenever you are in one of those three countries, you are most welcome to join us, to visit our smart cafes, enjoy a cup of tea and a very tasty tasty tea and see uh, the functions and the general work of the smart cafes at the premises of our universities. So as you have already seen, we have developed virtual space for business ideas and open innovations, a very interesting and very useful tool. You are most welcome to join and to see what's going on. So by our European colleagues in total, four teaching materials have been developed. And based on that, more than 30 members from each institution has been trained 
selected and trained from Eastern partnership countries on entrepreneurial skills. So 20 specializations and specialized in dealing with open innovation have been also trained. We have in total eight entrepreneurial trainings developed for students based on its assessment that have been carried out, as I've already mentioned, uh, within the frame of more than 600 stakeholders. So we have currently more than 30 collaboration ag agreements between Eastern Partnership, higher education institutions, per institution, and also industry science so far. We had conducted uh, offline and online and sometimes hybrid summer, winter, spring schools for our students on entrepreneurial education skills and competencies. And there are more than 200 students per institution so far trained. We have 20 mentors available for our students. We have already developed 60, 56 business ideas within the frame of our project that has been also presented during the smart national competition conducted in Moldova, Belarus, and Armenia. We have 56 open innovation projects with industry developed so far. And currently, we have more than 20 ideas and 50 students who took part in that in those national competitions. We have 21 revised and adapted subjects that have been included in the teaching curricula of the higher education institutions. Uh, smart cafes have already been um, indulged into the structure of our universities. In many cases, a position has also been for the smart cafe project manager or smart cafe coordinator has been created within the premises of our educational institutions. We had more than 150 disseminations or dissemination events, including smart talks with different sectors uh, of industry and also business uh, in online and offline formats. We had also conducted online hackathon, many, many dissemination activities. So some numbers on behalf of our consortium. Thank you very much. And we are going to very quickly and briefly to present our impact uh, that was achieved uh, due to European partners and European Commission support. Lilith, please, could you introduce us in these details? Uh, yes, thank you. So one of the core aspects of the project is its impact on uh, different dimensions, and I'm going to present each dimension. So um, the impact on individual level was that students, graduates and teachers from partner higher education institutions are where the direct target groups and beneficiaries and they develop their knowledge and experiences, skills and competences. Uh, their entrepreneurial months, mindset, uh, and also the quality of teachers' education and delivered subjects, engagement in labor markets, startups, and uh, much more has been advanced. At institutional level, uh, the impact was that teaching approaches of teaching staff of participating higher education institutions uh, were improved and increased, and training courses elaborated within smart cafes have been partly included into the teaching process, and thus the quality of education has increased too. Students have increased their abilities and were able to develop new ideas and were engaged in labor market easily. At regional level, uh, the impact was that a new model of a public-private people partnership fitted the partner country context and used regional approach and the created smart cafes within each higher education of partner country has created a strong network for generating, developing, and commercializing innovative ideas through entrepreneurial road or in collaboration with companies. These conditions were contact building between entrepreneurs and students and have been delivered on more qualified workforce. At national level, the new model has extended the role of higher education institutions in society in each partner country, and it brought students, researchers, entrepreneurs, small and medium enterprises, solution and service providers, users into co-creative environment, thereby substantially increasing the likelihood for both higher financial startups and successful open innovation and national uh, at national levels. So uh, at European level, it should be mentioned that fostering the integration process of higher education institutions into the high, European higher education area, built as an area using common tools and also in alignment with the Bologna principles. Thus, the partner countries updated their higher education systems, making them more compatible with the EU standards and strengthening their quality assurance mechanisms by increasing the students' potential. Elena? Thank you very much. 
And um, of course, we faced several problems. Uh, Ani will introduce you very quickly in this problem. Thank you. Thank you, Yelena. As already been mentioned by Yelena, we had a very dynamic, very friendly environment for working. Unfortunately, there were also some challenges that we faced during the implementation of the project. Namely, it was the language barrier that we sometimes our colleagues um, had to had to tackle with this challenge. The second one was the social and political instability in some of the partner countries with also its dynamic effect on turbulences. Unfortunately, COVID-19 outbreak in 2020 affected. It was the main challenge that all of us faced, including partner and program countries during the project and implementation. And also the armed conflict in Artsakh and the surrounding territories, it also affected the implementation uh, of the project since one of the project partners um, is Armenia. So basically, this was the challenges that we faced during the project implementation. Thank you. Thank you very much. But anyway, we are happy that we achieved all our results and today we can share them with you. So thank you very much for your attention and time. We're ready to answer any question you may have. Thank you very much. Thank you for the representatives of the SMART projects. Uh, dear participants, if you have questions, please put them in the Q&A section uh, and we will uh, have a little um, Q&A session after the presentations. Uh, may I now ask the colleagues from the V2Work project on stage? Sorry, should I answer through the question and a QA session? Yeah, if I have any question. Yes, if you have a question, you can introduce them in the Q and A se uh, section. But this is more for the participants uh, if they have questions for the speakers, and then you as speakers will give them the possibility later to answer those questions. Okay. Thank you. Okay, have you seen my screen, right? So yes, we start? can see it. It's visible. You can start, please. Okay, so good afternoon from Vietnam. I'm Ji and my co-presenter is Hai, who is going to speak to you in a few minutes. Uh, today, we have the honor to uh, represent the V2Work to showcase our results uh, of the our Erasmus Plot CPHE project. So in our presentation today, we will focus on our successful story, successful results together with the challenges we face and also a little bit on our secret of success. But before that, let me share with you what V2Work is and who we are through an introduction video by our uh, excellent coordinator, Ms. Christina Veen from University of Alicante, Spain, who were actually the soul of our project. So it's about one minute long. We just have a look. So V2 Work, v2 work is, a is a capacity, capacity building, building in higher education project that is co-funded by the Erasmus Plus program of the European Union. It's the project that works with eight universities in Vietnam, the Ministry of Education and Training, ISX Student Association, Vietnam Chamber of Commerce and Industry, and uh, three partners in Europe. And all together, our objective is to modernize and strengthen the higher education system of Vietnam so that they can better support their students' employability and entrepreneurship initiatives. But more specifically, what we're working with is with our eight partner universities in Vietnam to help them strengthen their career centers. So they have institutional capacities to work with their students. Their staff are better trained so they can develop new services related to employability, entrepreneurship, help their students find better jobs or start up their own companies once they've graduated. Additionally, we're also trying very hard to strengthen the relationships between the universities and the business sector either the employers or the members of the entrepreneurship ecosystem. The tissue of society that is key for universities to work with to help students develop these abilities and find right jobs. And our view is that career centers in universities are the perfect bridge, the link between the business sector, the employers and the universities. To help them establish these relationships is one of our goals. 
Okay, so in our short video about V2Work, you can still find more in our, is a capacity uh, YouTube channel, or you can Google it by V2Work YouTube, and then you can find us very easily. So as presented by our, by our coordinator, beside three EU partner, we have eight Vietnamese university. And as you can see on the screen, we are quite well distributed all across Vietnam. And Beside the diverse in terms of geography, we are also diverse in terms of a stakeholder. So we had representative of students, of business sector, and especially we have the representative, the participation of the policy makers. And in our case is the Vietnamese Ministry of Education and Training. And it's for the participation that made our project a structural one. Okay, and uh, all together, we work to with an aim to uh, achieve our general objective, the long-term one, as you can see on the screen, and also to uh, fulfill our two specific objectives of modernizing career center of eight uh, Vietnamese university and strengthening the relationship between university and enterprises. And to do, to fulfill our well-defined um, objective, we have done a lot of activity and I'm trying to show the website, but maybe it not appears here at a check. So hi, mm. could you please send it to and the Q&A section for me. Thank you. And we have done a lot of activity together, and uh, especially in each university and also together at a group, at a project. And now let's come to the most important part of our presentation, the result part. Up to you, hi. We cannot hear you, hi. I am afraid your audio is not working. We can see you and uh, your video works, but your audio does not. And you seem to be not muted, so I do not know what has happened. Okay, so while waiting for Hai to work on her microphone, Hai, you can turn on and turn off, or maybe you can try to get in again. Okay, so I will present in terms of her part. Uh, so over the part three and a half year V2Work project, we have um, done a lot of things together and we have achieved our objective and now I would like to introduce the three main uh, achievements of the project as you can see on the screen. And now I will go to it one by one. And I, whenever you can speak, please jump in and stop me. Okay. <laughs> okay. So the first achievement now uh, V2Work project had got in terms of the national level is that we could increase the capacity of university uh, in activity to support student employment and entrepreneurship efforts. So we could uh, increase our understanding of the current situation of graduate employment and entrepreneurship and increasing the awareness of this issue and the role of career center uh, in our university. And during the project, we have organized many training workshops and then replication training workshop in our own uh, university so that we can improve the staff skills in terms of English skill and research and analysis skill and also some employability and labor market analysis and entrepreneurship skill. So that is our first achievement. And um, we also have done a lot of things to increase the capacity of university to support student entrepreneurship and employment effort. So hi, could you speak now? <laughs> oh, we still cannot Unfortunately, hear. it still does not work. 
I do not know why. <laughs> she was really passionate to present this part. Yes. So bad. And we tried know. earlier and it worked. Just a quick thing, hi. There are three, bot three dots on the bottom of your screen. Please click there and see if you can change your microphone settings there. Um, can, in the meantime, Lanchi, can you please continue with the, with yeah, the presentation? Yeah, so I will Thank speak you. in for hi. So uh, actually, for if we talk about specific outcomes, uh, we uh, our project that um, virtual work did help the career center uh, to become stronger with clearer mission and organizational system, and the awareness or the mindset of university leader will also change in a positive way, and now uh, we got them more attention in terms of activity for students. And we also increase the visibility and recognition of Career Center, not only by the higher management, but also by um, the staff, the academics, and especially the students in our university. Um, and especially uh, we have uh, gained knowledge and experiences from the EU partner so that we could organize the career days in a different way than we did it previously. Uh, before Vietnamese university often um, try to organize job fairs uh, instead of career day. So the traditional form of job fair that we usually organize uh, normally uh, consists of uh, traditional booths for company to present and then some tables for them to to get employment. So career day, as we learned from the project, we had uh, organized with various activity, including things like mock interview for student or CV revision activity or a seminar by successful businesses or a workshop on soft skill and other skill for student. And we actually attracted more businesses and students coming to our new career day. Um, and also, uh, in terms of uh, capacity to support students, uh, we also want to mention that uh, we did have more services and the new one and more effective one for students and we have about 24 in total. And we also organized um, the enterprising uh, competition for our student. And especially we could have one national competition of the all partners in the project that called Big Green, uh, which were organized in um, October last year. And we also, the things that we want to emphasize were the online courses, uh, which the eight university career center could launch to their student and we could attract uh, a large number of students and staff with uh, nearly 7,000 that you can see on the screen. And hi, if you're happy, I can pass it to you now. Ah, <laughs> I still cannot hear you, hi. It still seems to not work. Ah. Okay, so I think you can check whether have you allow your browser to allow you to speak. So while waiting for Hai, I will continue. Okay, <laughs> okay. So this is the story of Hai University, Toyomo University, and she would really love to present to you, but this was just because of the technical problem. Maybe that's the thing we need to accept with online things, right? <laughs> okay. So uh, I also learned about this because um, th their success was just like the highlight of our project. Uh, I heard that Toyomo University have um, gained a lot of benefits and also experiences and lessons from uh, uh, the project. They started with uh, a small career center with uh, very few activity for students. But then in September 2018, with the launching of V2Work, 
um, they decided to rename their center into Center for Labor Market. And they had a lot of uh, new and effective activity along with uh, the project timelines. And um, uh, as a direct result of participating in v work, uh, they included entrepreneurship mainly in their tasks and they changed their name into Center for Labor Market and Entrepreneurship. And then in May 2020, at the end of our, nearly the end, uh, they changed it again into Center for Enterprises Cooperation and uh, Entrepreneurship. The changes of their names, I think, really defined their mission and also the activity that they would love to do with their student. And they had a lot of successes. They had they would have won a lot of awards for uh, entrepreneurship project by their student. And they also came second in our B Green uh, competition, uh, entrepreneurship competition organized by V2Work. And um, especially, uh, they have just a very excellent one uh, in the very new uh, news by them is that they uh, recently they have been named one of the top entrepreneurship and inter and innovation center in the area in the province so i think that was a big success and also the lesson for us to learn from them as you can see here, they have a lot of prizes. And another successful story will come from my university, Tengwin University. And why to Uyomok University um, of Heights had uh, excellent entrepreneurship result. Our university had quite a different success story when joining V2Work. And I could say that V2Work brought about comprehensive changes to our university activity for students. I think the first important activity that you can see on the screen were the creation of a new career center and roughly around one year after joining the project. Uh, before we did not have a career center in our university. And with the coming, with the creation of the Career Center, we organized activity in the project timelines and with the support of all the partners in the project and especially the EU partners, we could um, organize a lot of activity and effective and the effectiveness of those activity were really, were really good. And uh, in fact, we organized three online courses for students and staff with different topics, as you can see on the screen. And we, we had around 600 very eager and happy participants who often ask for more <laughs> uh, courses for them to, to participate on. And we also have new services um, for students, as you can see on the screen there. But I think um, when I claim success for my university, I could say that the most important changes or success that we had were the change in the mindset of both the higher management uh, and the staff and also the student as well in my university. So as I said before, before the project, we did not have much support for students and the higher management didn't consider it an important things to do. But after the project, now our career center received great support from the rector board and also the academics. And the student, especially the student, become more aware that they should not wait until after graduation to start mm. repair themselves for the job, for a job and for labor market. But they were aware that they are aware that they should improve their employability and then the employment while they are studying at university. And especially they are also aware that 
Now they have another path that are open for them, that is for the entrepreneurship part uh, in why studying in uh, uh, at university. And uh, coming up next could be Hai part. And can you talk now, Hai? No? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, so bad because it was so eager to represent. <laughs> okay, so um, uh, those are the very good uh, highlights of our project uh, to uh, emphasize the effects on building the capacity for the university. And besides that, we also achieve a good reinforcement between university and enterprise relationship. Uh, this was really uh, an innovation and a very successful thing that we did. Uh, during the project, we could organize more than uh, 50 business branches that is quite informal meeting between academics and especially the university representative and employers. And we also organized eight uh, employment and entrepreneurship ecosystem forums in eight provinces. And we all together bring all those things to, to the national conference, uh, which uh, was organized in, in uh, 2019, 2019. Uh, so that uh, the representative of the enterprises, university and student could sit together like this, like you can see on the screen and then discuss what should each uh, stakeholder do so that, that they can support and the uh, also employment and employability of students, the training of university, but also to support, support enterprises to recruit uh, talented and suitable uh, employer, employees for themselves. So, and beside that, as a result of this conference, we also successful in uh, producing policy recommendation, uh, which were written in the form of the policy white paper, uh, which were really beautiful, as you can see on the screen there. And in this policy white paper, we present uh, the recommendation for the regional forum and from the regional forum and national conference that I mentioned before. And these policy white paper were presented to the Ministry of Education and Training in spring uh, 2020 to consider for upcoming five year strategy for employment and entrepreneurship support activity in Vietnamese uh, education system. So I think that were the really good thing that we, we did. And um, the last but not least achievement that I would like to share was the creation of a network that we call Vietnam Employability and Entrepreneurship Support Network or VSNet for short. And the network were created uh, to be seen as a collaborative and extending effort of our project so that we could work together. And as you can see on the screen, we have representative from all the stakeholder and the man in the middle. Here is the representative of the MOAT, of the Ministry of Education and Training. Um, and we also, our NET had uh, the first meeting in uh, Nha Trang in our final conference of the project. And so you can see that Vita work had significantly raised the visibility of university level support for employment and entrepreneurship in Vietnam. And when the project ended, they live at eight strong career center with new services, new classes, new activity for the student and graduate, and a closure relationship with the labor market and also the policy maker. So I think that really re deserve a big hand to our success, right? <laughs> okay, and 
Yeah, we were successful and we were happy about that. But it did not mean that we faced no challenges. There were several challenges that we faced, but uh, I could love to mention just uh, the only one that seemed to be the biggest, that the COVID-19 pandemic, like uh, the partners from Smart Project had just mentioned. So the COVID-19 pandemic affected us in a number of, of ways, like uh, lockdown and university closure and uh, bans of uh, social activity. So we could not organize the activity the way we planned before, but we had to opt for hybrid event and meeting and conferences with the self-nominated uh, amateur Facebook and YouTube live streamers. That adds. <laughs> okay, and many of our meetings, as you can see, were in hybrid mode with our EU partner online and we, Vietnamese partner, gathering in one venue like this. And maybe I, I don't have to tell you how sad and jealous our EU partner were <laughs> for not being with us. Okay, so you may ask, uh, what are the secrets of our see? success. There are still many, I have to say, but I can confidently say the key factor for success in our project are the people. So we had a group of people who were really dedicated and enthusiastic in supporting students, and especially with the support of our coordinator, we could uh, develop the rapport and the friendly relationship among partners during our uh, work working section and also outside the working section that you can see on uh, the screen, our visit together to different places in the venue that we had our training workshop. Sorry, Lanchi, um, sorry for interrupting you. Um, can you uh, please uh, try to come to an end because we're running out of time? Okay, so I just have one or two more. And we had, uh, we also had a um, very good communication among one another, especially with the use of um, um, social media, things like this. And we support one another during the project so that we could uh, finalize and we could complete our project successfully. And also right now to support um, the launching and then the running of our network. So as a Cree among us, uh, v V2 work was the past, but uh, VSNet is our future. And our commitment to sustain the good result we gained from v work. And it's also our platform to call for cooperation and initiative to support student entrepreneurship and employability and employment from all of you here. So if you are interested in future cooperation with us, uh, you can find our information on the screen and also our email address here. Thank you for listening. And we are happy to answer any question if any. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lan Chi. Uh, thank you to both uh, V2Work uh, representatives. I'm sorry for the for the technical issues. Um, I would like now to give the floor to the colleagues from Rebus to present their project. Thank you very much, Emmanuel. I'll try to do my best to, to be as quick as possible. Uh, obviously, the, I, I'm not the first person listed here. Uh, Professor Ilana Shakovic is representative of the, of the University of Montenegro, and he was she was uh, our main contact with uh, the partner of the University of Montenegro for this project. I will first introduce you with the reason for starting such kind of a project, and that's the reason that we discussed locally at my university. On the right side, you see an average photo of the public company on its working place in, in, in my country. That means that besides Herbert, we have about six, seven, eight manager, different managers and supervisors that are not really doing almost anything here. And these are unfortunately the preferential employments of our students, or at least they were. So public jobs at right are clearly showing that, that we don't need that many managers. And as, as a country of a transition coming from the former planned economy to the market economy, 
we need to restructure our education at the first at the first step in order to reach the effective market economy in in the future so the question was can our students become entrepreneurs or, or and deploy themselves or can they behave as entrepreneurs in their first place of the employment and uh, that was the reason to establish such kind of a project to change the structure to change the mind of our students but also at the very beginning to change the mind of our professors so if our professors in the age of 60 or 65 were working at the public university for last 40 years how ready they are at all to to teach to lecture entrepreneurial topics so we wanted first to change the professor's mindset and uh, one of the questions that we posed in the in the early phase was what are you doing with these social organizational or personal companies where is mathematics here in, in engineering studies we also wanted to change the students mindset meaning to change their resistance to public uh, resistance to private employments or or they are let's say uh th their willingness to go abroad to work instead of that we wanted to change their mind and to establish such kind of to create such kind of, of jobs locally we wanted to organize validation system of such kind of informal competencies like uh, uh like communication competencies or, or noticing uh a challenging ideas or something like that in the wanting to introduce certificates of such competencies the first next step is always with whom can you do it so we selected in 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 the process of communicating with other partners we selected total of 14 partners 13 besides my own university coming from even eight countries three eu countries are austria germany and italy and all others are actually transition countries countries that were formerly planned economy that were socialist or communist countries and now are slowly very slowly very gradually going into the market market plan uh, the other countries of course are albania kosovo montenegro and russia besides my own uh bosnia Herzegovina. so it's it's a very complex part it's 14 partners and one of the key questions was can it be fun can, can you do the project that is not an effort an everlasting effort but is actually a fun with with reaching the goals that you have set and uh after the first negotiation that you can see in, at the right top angle we reached the point of a good communication and cooperation all of all of these partners and and uh the the, the short video on the left side is not really showing the, that kind of a cooperation uh the project structure is very convenient the project structure is first you need to know what what is the gap you, you you want to reach some state and you know what is your actual state so the work package one is always a kind of a preparation a research and needs analysis what do we lack uh, work package two is 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 also very convenient now you start developing the teaching materials now you start developing all of the blended learning modules which is again a new topic for our our universities and uh, within work package three you start to develop uh, training and, and and counseling of the staff that will use these training modules work package four is usually piloting so you you test all of your test all of your materials that you prepared with your students and you find out if they are they are proper or they need some polishing or improvements and then you put them into into the real life world packages five six and seven are convenient management uh work packages to to secure the quality to assure the quality to as much as possible disseminate the information on what did you do and of course to manage properly all, all of the project what were the main challenges that was one of the key questions and my responses are not really uh, oriented to to the agency that developed this project but is uh, is more oriented to the potential future project partners in Rebus projects first of all i have to say that uh, professors and we had a mixture just not to forget if you had a mixture of, of public and private universities as partners and institutions and that, that's a very good point because you you find out a mixture of, of mindsets of these people which is not the same if you are working in the public and the private university I have to say that technical challenges for all of these people were not so high professors awareness was was relatively high their commitment was quite high so the technical results of the projects are usually undoubtful usually but at the same time from a different point of view these professors are not really able or are not used to report professors are, are, are higher living beings 
they they don't report to anyone except to the dean and they are not used to report some small items like what did you do and how much did it cost and what was the cost of your your travel that's that was a kind of a problem so the capacities for uh training on on entrepreneurship topics and competencies and blending learning was introduced easily but never and also one one important item that that we use zoom platform within this project for uh, uh non-face to face meetings continuously all from the project it was very helpful in the pandemic year but administrative challenges were much higher public universities professors do not report and and templates that are are offered for recording their hours or days of being engaged within the project are not so helpful because they are working across the seven work packages and later on after they write the, the number of days and hours for each of the work packages they need to summarize them by themselves luckily i had engineers but many of the projects do have uh, social professors social sciences professors which are not convenient or, or are not used to summarize five or, or, or ten digits so templates need to be improved and one more important thing is is that the unit cost concept which is understood by by a limited number of people is is very very inconvenient for the majority of the professors so they were they were asking the same question repeatedly my uh, my my flight is costs uh, 290 euros and i'm allowed 275 what am i going to do so this needs also to be improved in next uh, addresses or, or in other words if you want to properly manage your project, you, you need a partner who, who is used to these issues. Uh, after that, after this part, this is an introductory part. I will let uh, the, the, the representative of the University of Montenegro to present you what did they achieve as, as a specific part. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, now I'm going to present uh, what we have achieved at the University of Montenegro through this project. Uh, here you can see that uh, tailored teaching materials in the field of entrepreneurship were prepared and the University of Montenegro teaching staff uh, was trained uh, by EU partners. Two generations of University of Montenegro students were trained in the field of entrepreneurship uh, during the project, uh, uh, which was continued uh, after the project ended. The first generation was trained at the University of Palermo and the University of Montenegro, oh. while uh, later generations uh, have been trained, uh, trained uh, at the University of Montenegro. Here you can see some photos uh, of the study visit of Rebus students at the University of Montenegro, uh, University of Palermo. They were trained uh, students from Montenegro, Bosnia and Herzegovina, and uh, Albania. Actually, training in the field of uh, entrepreneurship uh, at the University of Montenegro was organized uh, through face-to-face -face learning, online learning, and through analysis of some case studies. Actually, students worked uh, on their own projects under uh, the supervision of their mentors. For that purpose, students use computers and software programs provided through the Rebus project. Uh, students who passed, uh, who passed uh, training through the Rebus project obtained certificates, of course. Uh, first generation of Rebus students obtained certificates related to competencies. These competencies are intercultural teamwork and uh, spotting ideas and opportunities, while second generation of Rebus students obtain certificates uh, in the field of entrepreneurship. Here you can see awarding certificates to the first generation of Rebus students at the University of Montenegro. It was organized uh, during the celebration of the day of the faculty, when diplomas of the Faculty of Mechanical Engineering were also awarded. When we talk about equipment uh, through this project, uh, the Faculty of Mechanical Engineering obtained 30 computers and 30 software licenses that we used uh, for students' education in the field of uh, entrepreneurship. Software is composed of three parts uh, called uh, Mahara Moodle and uh, Level 5. You can see on this uh, slide office at the Faculty of Mechanical Engineering equipped with uh, those computers where we performed uh, training of students in the field of entrepreneurship. Uh, here you can see software platform Mahara used uh, as uh, some kind of entrepreneurial social network where students uh, created their profiles and uh, shared uh, their CV, photos and projects. Uh, through this platform, students also could make uh, some groups. Here you can see some interesting profiles of University of Montenegro students involved in the Rebus project. 
On this slide, you can see the teaching material uh, of University of Montenegro prepared through this uh, project. Uh, it is in Moodle platform. Uh, level five is a tool uh, used for the evaluation of students' competencies. By this tool, uh, students perform their own self-evaluation of their knowledge, skills, and attitudes for each competence. Of course, they do that under the supervision of their mentors. I definitely can say that uh, benefits of Rebus projects are great. Uh, actually, the training in Palermo is the first major mobility of the Faculty of Mechanical Engineering students. Uh, that mobility actually encouraged, uh, encouraged uh, other students to be much more interested in mobility, to be involved in other international projects, and to improve their uh, English proficiency. I also can say that we enabled the sustainability of the results of this project. Actually, we created one completely new study course called uh, Innovation and Competitiveness, and we made upgrades uh, within five other courses focused on entrepreneurial learning. We did it in order to continue with teaching students about uh, entrepreneurship. Uh, I can say that uh, now we much more encourage students uh, to do their seminar papers and uh, final exams in cooperation with uh, existing companies or new startups. The seminar papers are recognized as part of the exam and uh, have, uh, of course, uh, ECTS credits. We also encourage students to think critically and to apply some methods and techniques uh, for solving some problems in practice, uh, which can bring some benefits uh, for Montenegro companies. I definitely can say that the uh, importance of uh, entrepreneurship learning was very well promoted through this uh, project. Regarding that, University of Montenegro recognized the importance of entrepreneurship learning. And because of that, uh, in the first strategy of University of Montenegro are defined objectives like uh, strengthening cooperation with the economic and public sector, then improving the student support system and uh, uh, this is uh, one sub objective uh, called providing support uh, to students in order to easier employment and starting their own business uh, next year we will have accreditation of four study programs at the university of montenegro which will uh, secure the sustainability of rebus project results in accordance uh, with new guidelines we have to prepare study programs in a way that uh, each technical study program has at least one study course focused on uh, innovation and entrepreneurship a minimum of 20 percent of practical classes and 20 percent of online classes in accordance with previous, you can see that uh, the Rebus project has had a great impact on many spheres of University of Montenegro activities. You also can see that University of Mont Montenegro recognized the importance of entrepreneurial learning and uh, has enabled the sustainability of Rebus project results. Thank you very much, Elena. Sustainability is also usually visible in, in establishing new projects that are building upon the results of the former one. So, for example, these are the two mentioned, which are both, re, uh, both again, Erasmus Plus capacity building for higher education projects. One is called Eviva. It's ongoing. It's going to last till the next summer. Another one started a year later, or No Hub. It, it, and all of these projects are, are kind of, of either building specific competencies of the students or are connecting these students with, with, uh, with, with the market, with, with the employments. Uh, what other partners think we do have? We do have a video, but unfortunately, video cannot be shown through the Google slide. So after my last slide, I will ask my uh, our colleague Emmanuel to show the, the, the video. And this is the last slide where I'm giving you the link where many, many results with high replication potential of our projects are available for your use. If you do have any questions, be, be aware that we do have all of the responses, so don't worry about that. I'm going to stop sharing right now, and I'm asking the Emmanuel to show the, the video. This project allowed our university to take a fresh look at the educational process, uh, standardized programs, and eventually to make some changes uh, concerning the evaluation of the achieved level of uh, competences. Uh, so it was mainly facilitated by the self-assessment tools provided by the project. Rebus project, I learned that uh, to be competent in certain field, you not only need to have the knowledge and skills to do things, but also you need to do things by heart. So that's very important for me. 
Vegas is a wonderful project and I was extremely happy to be part of this wonderful consortium. I think we achieved a lot. Uh, and thanks to the creativity and innovation of all the partners, uh, especially from the Balkan and Russia. Thank you very much. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you also to the representatives from the Rebus project. Um, we have now the possibility, I apologize that we're a little bit over the time, maybe we can still take um, a, a few more minutes, maybe maximum of five minutes to to have a look at uh, questions that were asked. There are uh, fortunately not uh, not too many. Um, there was, uh, the, they're both from the same person. I have the possibility to share them on, on stage. I think this question was asked during the first presentation of the of the SMART project um, from uh, Mr. Ivo Flammer. Uh, are there in the project uh, incubators or accelerators involved as part uh, of the universities or, or uh, independent private uh, institutions? So it's like about your your project uh, composition. Thank you very much for the question. So actually we involved, uh, we collaborated with many companies, but we had it as a partner, the acceleration company uh, uh, as uh, normally it should be. Um, we were thinking about this, but we created the like a an incubator within the premises of higher education institutions. So we created by ourselves this uh, based on the practice uh, and experience experience that we gather it through the, uh, our study visits uh, in uh, to our European pro partners. Thank you very much, Elena. Um, and there is a second question as I said, also from uh, Mr. Flammer, do you agree with the following statement? Private companies do not profit from the proposed entrepreneurial uh, projects very much. They profit much more through improved uh, entrepreneurial understanding and skills of the students as future employees. This question was asked uh, during the presentation of V2Work. So uh, Lanchi, maybe I can uh, give you the floor. Yeah, thank you, uh, Ivo, for your question. I agree with you that if we look at uh, some cases, especially for the private one, maybe they are not really interested in helping our students, but they are gaining money from it, right? But uh, for me and for our project and other partner in the project, we are trying to have the win-win situation where the cooperation should be beneficial to both stakeholder, both sides, so that while helping students, but the, um, the private sectors, the private enterprises still can can gain some benefit from it. But we, as a, as a supporting body in the university, we will make sure that it could be the win-win one. Hope that it answers your question. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lanchi. I also have uh, uh, Branko from the, from the Rebus project who would like to say something to this. Yeah, just to say that the, the focus of, of such kind of projects is capacity building of higher education and not capacity building of the of the private companies. So it's it's pretty logical that we are doing the best that we can with uh, creating or, or providing the market with the students that have these competencies. And of course, this is the key issue of our local companies, which makes them more competitive in 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 arena with with international companies or for example, neighboring companies or Germany or, or EU companies at all. So the idea was not to, to, to strengthen the companies. The idea was to, to strengthen the potential of the employment market, to strengthen the potential of our graduates to enter this market and to change it completely. 
Thank you, Branko. Um, okay. Dear participants, we have reached the end of our session. I apologize that we have taken uh, 10 more minutes of your time. Um, I would like to say um, a big thanks to our presenters um, for the very informative and interesting talk. Uh, I hope that this session was uh, beneficial to everybody. I, I see in the chat that uh, many of you were active uh, and said that they are looking for collaboration. You will have the opportunity to do so in the networking session in the lounge later today so please um, have a look and don't miss out on the on the other sessions uh, thank you for your attention and i uh, wish you good luck for the future of your projects thank you very much